Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Seagrass Rye coming to us from the Barrel Craft Spirits Company or Barrel. Now Barrel's been around for quite some time. I remember when they first started about five or six years ago. You know, I was really intrigued by what they were doing. They were sourcing from all over different places and, you know, even though they were, you know, sometimes what... I would be a little leery of, let's say, some Tennessee whiskeys. You know, they were sourcing some five-year-old uh, Dickles and so on that were pretty solid. So I was, like, really intrigued by them buying several of their stuff, light whiskeys and so on. And then about, you know, a couple, two, three years later, I was still tasting their products, but I wasn't as uh, thrilled with as they were going into getting into a lot of different finishes and combining a ton of finishes kind of lost me you know and I was just like it's getting a little muddy right and so uh, I hadn't bought one in quite some time and then I actually tasted this bottle from a buddy of mine and I was intrigued and curious because of the finishes that were involved it's a rye whiskey that's finished in uh, French Martinique rum casks there is some Madeira cask maturation going on and apricot brandy casks and as far as the rye whiskey itself that's in here, it's a combination of rye. They're sourcing from Kentucky, Tennessee, um, Indiana, and Canada. So pretty much everywhere we can get, you know, our rye whiskeys, North American rye, are in this bottle. It's bottled at 118.4 uh, proof. Retail pricing on it's going to be about 80 to to $100, somewhere in there. Hopefully closer to 80 That's where I see it. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the nosing and tasting. And the one thing I will say is that when I did taste my buddy's bottle, I was like, you know, I really kind of like it. And then the more it opened up in my glass, I was like, wow, the apricot is just start, starts pouring out of the glass the longer it sits. And so I was really fascinated by that. And then ever since then, I've been sharing this with several of my friends, and we all kind of had that same experience. So it's kind of interesting in that way. All right, let's get to the nose. Now, I just poured it. I'm trying to coat the glass really well just so I can make sure I try to open it up as fast as possible for us. There we go. Yeah, very rye forward. You definitely know this is rye whiskey. You know it's the star of the show. Even though it has these unique, crazy finishes, it's not covered up. Plenty of... Oof. Grassy rye, grape skins, dried floral component going on, cinnamon, that strawberry rhubarb that's in here, a little bit of cherry as well, poached pears, that's part of the fruit component. And of course the apricot. The apricot just starts, like right now when I just poured it, it's still, it's really noticeable, but it's not overpowering anybody. But as this goes along, that apricot really starts to build and almost match the 118.4 eight, eight, proof rye whiskey base. Like it's just right there with it. Oh, yeah, here we go. It's starting to grow already. Okay, let's go ahead and taste it and see what we think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really right forward. I think, um, to me, I almost envision grape skins, um, grape leaves, because there's almost a vegetalness to it. Grassy rye. A little wisp of, like, a slight saltiness going on. Mm. You know what that is? That's that that vegetalness. Yep. It's that kind of grassy vegetalness and then that mm, mm. That little is almost like a I don't want to describe it as it's not funky, but it's rummy. There's a little bit of that French Martinique rum right up front. And then you start feeling the swell of that cinnamon. 
and then right as soon as you crest over the mid palate that's when you start picking up a lot of that apricot brandy cask influence and you start picking up just a hint and it is a hint of the madeira the madeira almost to me feels more like um just sweet dates and that's about it on this one it's not a lot of heavy raisin or a lot of fig or anything like that all right let's try it again Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, rye bread, right up grape skins, rye bread. Strawberry rhubarb, that would be the fruit component. That poached pear that's in there drizzled with a lot of caramel. The apricots are already starting to show up now on the mid palate. Cinnamon swells, it starts rolling over. On the back end you get cocoa powder. A little bit of a lemon spritz a little lemon zest sprinkled on top of everything as well nice citrus component going on a little vanilla i think that's the rum character still carrying throughout on the back end a little leather i like the leather tone to it it's a little newer leather but it's really nice now the more you let this glass sit the more the apricot's going to come out I know when I first tasted it, that's what really blew my mind was how it was pretty muted when you first nose it. Uh, you get the apricot, but it's not huge. And then by the end of the glass, when I started going back to the last little few sips, it was just so much apricot pouring out of the glass. So to kind of speed that process up, and I don't have my dropper on me, but I'm going to go ahead and use a little touch of water here. When you do this, be very careful because you just want a little water. So this one was... That was probably the, would equal maybe three or four drops of water there. And of course, I always give it a nice little time to mix and mingle because when you first introduce water to a spirit, first thing that's going to pop out is the cinnamon and the oak. And so we need to let that kind of calm back down a little bit. Wow. Okay, made the made the citrus pop a lot more. But it is lemon. Maybe a little twist of orange as well now. That strawberry rhubarb is definitely intensified. As has the pear. Caramel sweetness still pouring on. The dark fruit component is getting a little more complex here. Maybe a little fig is now starting to come out with that date on the back end. Apricots pretty much remains the same. It has sweetened up a little more and become a little more um, pronounced. Sometimes I like to blow out the glass and kind of reset it. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, that was that vanilla. That rum is still definitely in there. But now it's a little more noticeable. Okay, here we go. Mm. yeah yeah that's great big rye characteristic it is it's just everything you would want in a rye is in this one but you get the bonus i don't know the i don't know what's the word the crazy factor of the apricot brandy cast and then you get that kind of lightly grassy funky r vanilla rum characteristic from the french martinique cask almost floral popping the thing that i think i find most fascinating about this is how they picked casks that work well with rum uh, with rye because you know the french martinique those casks and i'm very familiar with that as well because in my Saint Sally whiskey project that's coming out very soon. I'm working with French Martinique rum casks. And you see the grassiness and the floral, the vanilla tones from that rum work really well with this rye whiskey. Because you're not sure where the rye is, if the rye is doing it or if it's the cask doing it. And that's the beautiful that I really, uh, beautiful part that I love in this one. Of course, now the apricot's really starting to pour out of the glass. It's almost like an apricot cobbler just pouring out. 
but when you taste it, it's still very rife. Centric is f just focused on that rye. Sweet and dense. You get the pears, all that rhubarb, strawberry, that's all there. The cinnamon, the, now the lemon zest is joined with a little orange oil. A little dusting of cocoa on the back end. The dates, now with the fig, with the water. And the vanilla tone from that rum still running underneath. Apricot just lingering on the finish. Overall, very, very enjoyable uh, rye whiskey. So if you happen to see this one out there, you know, probably be smart to pick up a bottle if you can. If you're looking for that unique rye, it's not going to be just like an unfinished rye. Of course, that apricot is making itself known, so make sure you like that. Um, but, you know, hopefully you can find this bottle out there. Of course, if you want to get a two-week head start on finding bottles like this that I review, join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound. There you get this video two weeks before it launches on YouTube. You also get a lot of bonus content that I'll do for my patrons there. And you can know that uh, all the money that I get, I just go to apply to get more bottles to review, and I give you my honest, uh, unbiased opinions. And so, you know, whether you join me there or here on YouTube, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, keep leaving all those great comments. I'll get back to them just as soon as I can. Everyone have a great day, and cheers.